God's grace, God's mercy, God's peace are yours, brothers and sisters, through the eyes, sight that faith has given you. Amen. The word of God that we consider is the gospel lesson and just a paragraph of Jesus' words. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Why? What did I do to deserve this? Why? We all know what he did to not deserve that. Isn't that how we work through life? We see the result, the end game, and we wonder how that happened. And, well, we look for the cause of it, and we try to either replicate it or we try to, well, eliminate it so that we can somehow control what is going to happen in the future, eliminate the bad things, you know, make larger numbers of the good things that happen. It's all dependent on us, what we do, and uh, boy, we torture ourselves. Why was my son born with the heart defect? Was it because, well, that party before I even knew I was pregnant when I had a beer? Why did my loved one pass away? Was it because I wasn't with her? That same type of thinking and torment was alive and very well in Jesus' day. It was the prevailing religious thought of the day. I wonder how many times the blind man heard it said to him. I wonder, we're not told, if he overheard the disciples when they saw the man who was blind from birth I wonder if he heard that question. I'm sure he heard it through his life. Who sinned, Lord, this man or his parents that he was born blind? Probably all of the days of his life and without seeing anything, fully internally perspective, did he spend his whole life wondering what he did to deserve his fate. The Pharisees in Jesus' day certainly thought this way. You can see it towards the end of the story after the man's sight was returned and the Pharisees were doing an investigation trying to figure out what happened and, well, he made testament to who and what Jesus was and did. Their reaction was, what do you know? Steep In sin from birth, you were obviously, you were born blind. That wasn't the only sin, though, that the Pharisees saw that day. Those who were the experts in the law, who who held the law of Moses as the very grid that they saw all of life through. It wasn't just the blind man whose blindness was all the evidence that they uh, needed to see of his obvious sin. They saw sin elsewhere. They saw the third commandment trampled underfoot of a man who dared work on that day, that day of rest, even if it was in the interest of healing the man born blind. Those who knew the law, who understood the scriptures, who were looked to as as guides for the blind, who knew the Old Testament scriptures that, that forecast the day of the coming of a Messiah who would come and heal disease and sickness, who would heal the lame and restore sight for the blind. All they saw was sin in the man who was standing before them healing the sick and the lame, and giving sight 
the blind. Those who diagnosed the blindness and claimed to see prove themselves the ones who in fact were swamped in darkness. Think of what Jesus did for that blind man. A man who woke up the morning like every other morning. He hadn't seen the sun break the horizon in his whole life. Do you think a man who's ever lived has appreciated the sunset on that day more than anyone I would imagine? A day where he finally could faces to the voices that were familiar in his life, who knew what his family looked like. The man who, who stood before the voice of the man who, who could put a face to the fingers that, that spread the mud on his eyes, who could put a face to the voice that said, go and wash What a pleasing sight to see Jesus standing there before him who had given him such a gift. But none of those gifts mattered more than the deeper sight that Jesus gave him that day. In the work in the face of Jesus, the man saw much more than just a man who helped him with a physical difficulty. The man saw in Jesus forgiveness for every sin and hope beyond this life for all eternity. And you know he did what he confessed. Lord, I believe. That's real sight. Brothers and sisters, the depth of sight given to that man that day is exactly the depth of sight that Jesus has given to you and to me. In faith, the world is opened up, and Jesus allows us to see things that are sights unseen with these eyes. It changes your perspective on everything. Think of how Jesus has changed the way that, that you and I see the world. Oh, anybody that is born and can observe the world can see what we can see. We see a world that is in decay. We see a world that is steeped in sin. It's obvious from what we see around us. But you see more. You see the object of God's deep love. I have frequented too many cemeteries the past few weeks. Wisconsin Memorial on Capitol Drive. That is a large piece of land that is filled with the evidence of the finality of this life. Chase medicine. Chase good health. Chase cures for diseases. One thing is sure. I'm going to end up in a plot of land much like that. But you see more. You see one grave outside of Jerusalem. 
that is still to this day empty. And for all that have been put in the ground, whether it's Wisconsin Memorial or anywhere else, you see their future? Easter Sunday and knowing the impact of that through our eyes of faith, we have hope for life well beyond the grave. You can handle the same law that the Pharisees did. You can see the sin in the world, but that's not what troubles you most, is it? You see the sin in yourself. You know God's words that those who sin are the ones deserve to die, who deserve God's condemnation. You see that. But Jesus has opened your eyes to the application of water and his word so that you see something more. You see what the blind man did in the person of Jesus. Forgiveness of sin justification in the courtroom of God and forever in heaven by his side. What wonderful sight God has given to you and to me. May God give to all of us a clarity of spiritual sight so that as we look out into the darkness of this world, we more than just speak light, we become it. Amen. Now may the peace of God that far transcends all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise as we join in confessing our faith. We'll do that in the words of the Nicene Creed this morning.